We have five, four minutes and see how many of them are coming. Good afternoon, Bante. Good afternoon. Okay. <coughs> Three more minutes. I'm counting. We start exactly at three o'clock. Our time. <clears throat> uh, German time, maybe. Uh, Nine o'clock, maybe. Australian time, maybe morning. Ude Pahai Bante. Ude Pahai. Ude Pahai. Take it Melbourne, neither. Sydney, Sydney. Sydney, Melbourne, then you to return it. Echo, Echo Villa. Echo Villa. What are you doing? I don't know what that What was. are you doing? I messed up. The good, uh, Japan time. Good morning. Mimi, California time is uh, one o'clock. Uh, twelve o'clock, Bante. Twelve o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Upeka. Where is Upeka? Venerable Lupeka Bante yeah. is uh, Where Ayan is Iroda and Venerable Lupeka together. Where? Where in uh, Sydney? Germany. Sydney. In Australia. Sydney. Yeah. Australia. Australia. Yeah. Uh, with Anoma. No, Bante, they are, they are Vihara. Santi Monastery from Santi Monastery. Santi Monastery. Oh. Ah, 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 ah. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Okay. Okay. Okay, let us begin. Eh? Okay. You hear the distance, sir? Selo Yatha. एक धानो वाते न न समीरती एवं निंदा पसंसासु 
न Okay, the whole stanza once again. Selo yatha ek ghano Vate na na samirati Evang ninda pasang sasu Okay, now let us see the meaning. Selo rock. Selo rock. Yata as eka ghano. Solid. Vatena by the wind. Na not. Samirati is shaken. Evam so ninda blame. Pasangsasu praise. Saminjanti are moved. Pandita the wise. That means just as solid rock is not shaken by the wind, so the wise are not moved by blames or praise. This is very, very important stanza. When you read, when you learn the story behind the story stanza, this meaning will be even more clear to you. Let me tell you the story. In the Buddha's time, there was a monk called Lakuntika Bhadya. Lakuntika Bhadya. 
He was very, very small in size, very small. When he was uh, walking in the monastery compound or outside anywhere, then these uh, novice monks who have no knowledge of Dhamma, who did not know this, who this monk is, uh, they did not know who this monk is, so they uh, when they when they saw this venerable monk, they come uh, towards him and massaging his head and say, "How are you, little uncle?" Pulled by the ear and I, "Where are you going, little uncle?" Then. Uh, touching the shoulders, ask, uh, how are you, little uncle? Touching his belly, ask, how are you, little uncle? So when they, when they say all these things, when they were teasing him like this, Venerable uh, Lakuntika Bhadhyaya uh, did not get upset. He did not have any resentment towards these other novices. And he just continued his uh, walk, whatever he was doing. Then the other monks saw this happening. They could not stop it. So they, after uh, midday meal, they all assembled in assembly hall and they were talking about this and they said, look at this monk, little monk, uh, he doesn't get upset when these noises come and tease him. He is very calm, quiet and peaceful. Then Buddha appeared there and asked monks, what was your topic for discussion this afternoon? What were you talking about? They told him what they were talking about him. Then they said, monks, this Lakuntaka Bhadya is an arahant, great arahant. Arahants don't get angry, don't upset, get upset. He became, uh, then they asked the Buddha, Venerable Sir, why did he become so little? Buddha said, because this little monk, in his one of his previous lives, uh, he was, he saw some people doing meritorious deeds giving dana. Then he said to them, uh, don't invite so many monks. Don't waste too much food. Invite only very few monks, very few nuns. Don't invite so many street people, homeless people. Uh, just collect a little bit. And so he made the people's large uh, gathering is small, large amount of giving small, large uh, uh, recipients, he became few recipients, and but he did not stop them giving. And because of that, in this life, he became very, very short, small. And he had so much in marriage that he practiced Dhamma and attain enlightenment. And therefore, even though he was little, he was an arahant. And he was like a, a rock. A rock is a, a not ordinary rock, solid rock. Solid rock doesn't have holes in it, no cracks, 
old, very, very solid. And uh, a solid rock, no matter how much wind blows from all the four directions, there's no shake. It remains steady and firm. Even if there is a tsunami, hurricane, tornado, this solid rock doesn't move, doesn't change. It remains firm and nothing can move that solid rock. Similarly, one who has uh, attained enlightenment, he does not move by the uh, blame and praise. Blame, praise are two of the worldly states. Worldly states. There are eight worldly states. They are called gain, loss, fame, deep fame, blame, praise, happiness, and unhappiness. These are called Loka Dhamma. Loka Dhamma. And all living beings undergo this worldly situation, worldly status, worldly states. And you must remember in Mangala Sutta, there is a stanza, last part of the stanza, Putta Saloka Sammehi Chittam Yasana Kampati Asokam Virajam Khemam Etam Mangala Muttamam Putta Saloka Sammehi Loka Dhamma means these eight vicissitudes, eight states. So the enlightened person will not be shaken up by any of these worldly residues, whether they gain fame, uh, they remain the same. When they lose, they don't shake up. When they are praised, they don't shake up, shake up. When they are uh, defamed, lose their popularity, they don't get upset. When they are blamed, they don't get upset. When they are praised, they don't get upset. They, when they have happiness, uh, pleasure, enjoying pleasure, uh, they don't get upset. When they have displeasure, dukkha, suffering, they don't get upset. Even arahants meet them. Even arahants have some times they gain, sometimes they don't gain. Sometimes they are praised, sometimes they don't. They are not praised. And sometimes they are happy, sometimes they are unhappy. But none of them can shake their mind, make them make them shaky, unhappy, depressed. And so forth, they remain steady all the time. Why is that? Because they understand this is the nature. You cannot go against, cannot go against the nature. You have to accept it and go along with that natural situation. It's been, uh, I think this is very important for all, uh, all of us, particularly monastic. Even though you are not attaining enlightenment, uh, still we can practice this because uh, we can never expect any all the time uh, to receive praise. Uh, 
the Ramtar people uh, accuse us, even for nothing. We will be very honest, sincere, observing our morality, practicing Dhamma, practicing meditation, and we live a very honest life, sincere life. And there may be some people who are jealous, some people who have their own problems, and they unload their problems upon us who live a very normal, honest life. And that is their problem, not ours. So those who practice, um, I have seen these people are very depressed. They are, they are going like uh, having a, a bipolar, you see? <laughs> bipolar is uh, the northern pole and southern pole. Sometimes they, uh, when they are praised, they go to the northern pole in emotion, emotionally. When they are blamed, they go to the southern pole <laughs> emotionally. So the um, Arahant don't go to the northern pole or southern pole. They remain in a sort of a, a equator, <laughs> equator in the middle. Uh, so very calm because they understand this is the nature of life. What can you do about it? Nobody can do anything about it. Even the Buddha was blamed for nothing. He was fully enlightened Buddha. And some people blame him because they were jealous. And they tried to accuse him. And they did accuse him. And Buddha remained Calm. One time when uh, one uh, 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 prostitute uh, was uh, killed by the, the by the Buddha's rival and buried her near the, near the monastery, and then they began to uh, shout uh, here and there and say, "Look at this! Uh, this." Uh, a uh, woman was a respectable woman. This uh, the Buddha and his disciples raped and killed her and buried near the monastery. And look at him. They pretend to be a noble person, good person, and the righteous person and so forth. Now look at this. And they began to spread and when monks went down for arms round, people blamed them. They did not give him arms food. They all were up and arm against them. Then Venerable Ananda approached the Buddha and said, Venerable said, we cannot live in this city. People are wild. They all of a sudden turn against us. Uh, let us go somewhere. Then Buddha said, Ananda, where to go? We go to such and such a place, Saketa. Then Buddha said, if a similar thing happened there, then Ananda said, where do I say we go to somewhere else? And Buddha said, if something happened there, Ananda said, go somewhere. Then Buddha said, Ananda, when trouble start at a certain place, the trouble should end there. Where trouble starts, there trouble stops. And therefore you wait for one whole week. Be patient, even if you don't get much food, be patient and wait. All will subside in a week. Exactly as the Buddha predicted, the king uh, found out the secret the plot and then collected all these people who the the culprits accused and they all were punished by the king and then all the trouble stopped so therefore even the buddha was blamed fully enlightened so that happens to anybody so this is a very normal thing uh, so, for the monks and nuns, 
gain is, what is their gain? Their gain is uh, four basic requisites, food, robes, lodging, and medicine. And uh, this, this is their gain. When they gain all these things, they don't become very proud and say we gain so much and so on. When they don't get them, they don't become depressed. They say, well, there may be reason for this. People may not have enough to give us. Uh, and therefore, we, we use whatever we receive and we satisfy. Then for lay people, gain is uh, wealth, money, bank account, you know, popular people, relatives, friends. These are their games, and uh, and they, when they gain this, they are happy. When they don't gain this, they are unhappy. So this is lab gain. Similarly, uh, I said uh, the the the. the uh, friends, friends, uh, associates, uh, when a monastery get them, they just accept them, okay, let them be our friends, let them come, and if they don't get, they, their people don't come, and leave them alone, they say, well, that's good, we can spend that time in meditation, and so forth. But, but for lay people, whose mind is not trained, when they have a lot of friends around them, they are very delighted, jubilant. When they lose them, they are unhappy, depressed. Similarly, when the monastic are praised, they say it is okay, that is their view. And when they are blamed, they say that was okay, uh, that is their state of mind. But lay people, when they are praised, they are again jubilant. Um, you know, they feel that they are uplifted. When they are blamed, they are very depressed and even get angry. <clears throat> then, uh, when they are happy, sukha, they are again jubilant. The monks and uh, monastics, when they have situation to make them comfortable, happy, they say, yes, this is comfortable. And yet, we must remember this is impermanent. This comfort will disappear. As they know, as they know when they lose their comfort and have a painful situation around them, they say, well, this is what it is. This is how it happens. So we understand even this is not permanent. But the lay people, when they are in a happy state, they have their good uh, children, relatives, friends, brothers, sisters, they are, and so forth, they are all uh, help to make them happy. They are very happy. When something happened to them and they caused some of death and so forth, they are unhappy. So this sort of thing doesn't happen. Uh, the ones who have uh, uh, this develop their mind. So um, this this also the big difference between enlightened person and unenlightened person wise person and unwise person. So they want to live uh, as wise people. So uh, people have in their life uh, soga, paradeva, dukkha, uh, grief, uh, pain, sorrow, lamentation, grief and despair. That happens to people. When situation arises where uh, pain, sorrow, sir, Lamentation, grief it can happen. Arahants remain steady. They don't get upset. 
so this is the difference between enlightened person and uh, unenlightened person. So uh, then Buddha uh, told the monks this story and Lakunda Gupati's monks story and uh, uh, advised them to learn uh, from that venerable monk, uh, venerable Lakunda Gupati, although he was very tiny little monk, but he is fully enlightened and he gave, he showed, uh, he set a very good example. He showed how an Arahant behaves. And so with this uh, the story, friends, I like to uh, go back to our uh, stanza and I like you to hear the stanza and try to remember this. I recite actually several times, uh, three, four times, and uh, make this young monk recite for you and all this I do for you to remember. Try to remember, try to pronounce the words and uh, let us go back to the stanza. Okay, listen to it. Selo yatha ekadhano vatena Nasamirati Evang Ninda Pasansa Su Nasamidang Tipandita. Okay, now let us decide. I decide line by line and two line by two line and then hold Sansa again by this monk and then. I ask you to recite it. Okay. Selo yatha ek ghano. Selo yatha ek ghano. Vate na na samirati. Vate na na samirati. Evang ninda pasang sasu. Evam ninda ninda pandita pandita One thing you may remember that monk when he recited he said na samijanti it is not samijanti samijanti nasal sound after m janti okay I two line by two line. Selo yatha ek ghano vate na na samirati. Selo yatha ek ghano vate na samirati. Evang ninda pasang sasu na saminjanti pandita. Evam ninda pasasu. I like you to hear him saying it. Selo yatha ek ghano vate na na samirati evang ninda pasang sasu Okay, I like to recite uh, who? Dayani Kyo. Okay. Selo yata ekagano vate na nasamirati Evang ninda pasang sasu nasamin janti pandita. Okay, good. Then, cloist siri sampuno. Nansh. 
Good. Upeka. Chelo yata eka kano vate nana samirati evam ninda asansa su nasamini janti pandita. Very good. Ruanti and uh, the son, Meyuru. I think Satima. Thank you. Selo yata e kagano wate na nasamirati e wang ninda pasang sasu nasamin janti pandita. Good. Okay. Then, uh, who is it? have you all recited? Yes. I didn't bathe. Ah, uh, Anoma. Selo yata ek gano bathe na nasamirati evam ninda pasansa su nasaminjati pandita. Okay, good. Nimi. Selo yata ek gano vate na nasamirati evam ninda pasamsa su nasamin janti pandita I think, okay, now if there anybody nobody Okay, Ruanti. Where is Maitri? Yes, Bante. <laughs> okay. Selo yata ek gano vate na na samirati evang ninda pasansa su na samin janti pandita. Okay. I think you all recited already. Very good. And now we can uh, spend some time in, uh, uh, in meditation. So uh, let me start meditation. Okay. I think you have listened to this uh, uh, Metta results uh, many times and still uh, it's not too much. Uh, 
not to overdoing. So let me recite it and you listen. And then I stop all my talking and then we all meditate. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will. Should anyone wish harm to another, as a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate loving, cultivate, cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness, this is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Okay, friends. Now let us meditate. We have at least uh, 20 minutes or t maybe 25 minutes we can meditate. Okay?
By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the foolish, may I govern always with the wise, until the time I attain a bond. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, May all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, friends, this is the end of today's session. And I want to share marriage with Everybody, as I mentioned this morning, may all those who are in hospitals suffering from various diseases, and may they all uh, find time to practice Dharma, practice meditation, and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those doctors, nurses, hospital staffs, who are helping these people, may they also find peace, happiness and comfort and live in peace and attain liberation by practicing Dhamma meditation. And all others who are in various trouble sports, various parts of the world, may they all find time to practice Dhamma, practice meditation especially all those who are in the northern direction, northeastern direction, eastern direction, southeastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, western direction, northwestern direction, northern up, up, up and down, all ways in living in all these ten, ten directions, be well, happy, and peaceful, and finally attain Nibbana. With this, I like to end this session, and I see you next week. Okay? Thank you very much, Thank you. 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 Thank you.